All right, so let's take a look at the Dragon OS uh, Focal R15 as the newest release. And something I want to cover, well, I touched on it before, but uh, I wanted to make this as easy as possible uh, to do a, uh, RF propagation modeling uh, with Signal Server and a web interface that runs it or interacts with it. And then we're going to take a look at uh, taking that propagation modeling and putting it into uh, another mapping engine. Uh, or a mapping en engine, I guess I should say, that's included in Dragon OS. I, I did some modifications too, so we'll talk through everything, but let's get set up here first. So, uh, this is running live off a USB stick, and what I have done is uh, put some map data in here in the user source SDF directory, which is where um, it needs to be in order for this to work. And um, I've already did the conversion. So that's there. This kind of covers a small little area in Colorado, and uh, it's it's uh, zipped up there. So, so you'll see that's already there. What we need to do, since I'm running this live, we'll make a var log Apache 2 directory. And uh, actually, I already did that. So we'll do we'll start up Apache 2. And we should be able to minimize this for a second. Take a look at uh, localhost splat. And so now you can see uh, what we're going to interact with here. Uh, first off, you need to enroll. I know it does say, like I've mentioned before, call sign. This was kind of made uh, for ham uh, operators. Uh, but, uh, you know, as I evolve this uh, interface here, it's going to apply for really anything. And uh, and, and this example, we'll put in a, I was looking up, uh, let's see, a TV tower, KRDO TV. So let's just try that. KRDO TV. And I'm going to stick with these default um, Latin long, longs here because uh, I know that elevation data covers that. And let's see, antenna height and feet AGL. If we look over here on the right hand side, I think we can get uh, 600, let's see, 2215 on feet. 2215. And I guess we could go ahead and put Colorado, submit registration. And so now we've got the data in here. We can search the database. We can pull up the uh, TV tower here, transmitter height, frequency of operation. I looked up what channel 13 is, so 156.650. Yep, OK. And what else do we got? Watts. So it was 200 kilowatts to watts, 200,000 watts, 200,000. We'll stick with 30 miles here. And so the target's antenna height. Um, I think we'll just go with the default here, five feet. We'll do a Longley Rice plot. And we won't add any other locations uh, from the database yet. So let's go ahead. We'll create a plot. It's processing behind the scenes here. With some default settings, what I'd like to do is expand those parameters to allow uh, more options uh, to be added. And so there's the KMZ file. And then here's the color scale where you can see what those colors mean as far as DB uh, wise is. So Let's download this file. And so this is where we're going to get into some of the new things uh, or some changes that were made. And what I did was I, I used DF Aggregator here, and we're going to take a look at that. It was designed to do network direction finding, um, primarily using the Kerberos SDR. And, uh, and then we'll take a look at uh, RDF Sim. And, and I'll kind of explain how this all ties together. But let's go ahead. And let's go in the user source DF aggregator. And we want to, 
so DF aggregator requires a, a database file because it's mainly meant for direction finding and saving information and if you do a dash H uh, you can see what options uh, are available and all I'm going to set is uh, dash D for the database file and I'll say home alive and uh, we'll just put YouTube as the name of it and I'll do a dash O for offline because um, we just will start it without receivers uh, turned on so hit enter and that's going to open up on 127.0.0.1 port 8080 and I do have this uh, uh, laptop plugged into the internet so that we can get some additional map data but by default there is an offline uh, map database and so the cesium application is installed locally in Dragon OS and, uh, and what I've done here is I've uh, added uh, this additional option for file upload so if we come here and we browse for that uh, KMZ file we just made we can upload that and you give it a second <clears throat> and so now we can see our uh, plot and we can change let's see we can change since I'm online we can change the uh, map imagery something a little better here uh, we can even do let's see we can even check out uh, world terrain and you can change the opacity here kind of see through it a little bit I uh, probably could have did more than 30 miles. If you have a mouse plugged in, you can tilt back and, and see the actual elevation uh, and how the propagation wraps over that elevation. And so now you have the ability to uh, pull that KMZ file into something else on Dragon OS. And so that's kind of like step or phase two or whatever what I've been wanting to do here with the propagation modeling and then plotting it on the map and since we've got this uh, DF aggregator pulled up let's take a look at something else we can do at the same time here uh, you can use RDF sim uh, which is a simulator for the Kerberos SDR so if you don't have any Kerberos SDRs and you still want to do direction finding this is a really awesome uh, way of doing it and you can even create uh, scenarios using the scenario generator uh, and you can see some of the directions here I'm just going to open up one of the example uh, files that comes with RDF sim so if we go to user source RDF sim we take a look here let's look, look at the help file so really if we run uh, the Python file with a dash J and we'll do the example JSON hit enter so now we've got it on port 8081 so 127.0.0.1 port 8081 and you'll see there's a example already built here with uh, it's a single mobile transmitter with a regular transmit cycle of one minute three minutes idle so what do you do from here you just click on the stations you copy and paste the information into the receivers section of DF aggregator and we'll do that for all three of them Should have Alpha Bravo Charlie. Now I didn't uh, create a scenario where these uh, stations would line up with the propagation modeling, but you could see how you could use this all together. So let's enable the receivers, plot all intersection points, and we'll zoom out here a second. And let's come out a little further. And let's go over this area here and so now we we have our
stations here. There we go. Ah, a new mouse. All right, so now they're receiving, uh, and so you see once the transmitter is active, um, the uh, lobs line up, and you get your intersections. And if these were real uh, receivers, you can change the uh, power level so you can uh, block out uh, junk, oops, junk from coming in. And you definitely should have a pretty good uh, graphics card uh, or graphics processing or something when using this uh, cesium. And so there's the intersection points that have been um, where, where the uh, intersections have occurred. And we see we've got three potential locations where this transmitter is moving and then the ellipse is created around that. One, two, three. So it's a pretty, pretty powerful tool. Uh, I just wanted to show all three here. Uh, and, uh, and so I just want to keep adding on to this. And so hopefully uh, this is uh, pretty useful to, to others. All right. Thank you.